Summer gardens are producing beautiful homegrown tomatoes about this time, and there are so many different ways to enjoy them. Well, from soups and sauces to name a few, here to share a recipe in our CI Kitchen with the Family to Table blog is our guest chef and blogger, Natalie Kenny Marquez. Welcome back. Hi. So I don't have any tomatoes yet, but I'm assuming people at the farmer's market do. Tons of tomatoes. I visited a lot of our local markets. I've talked to the Bloomington market area. I've been to Southern Illinois, lots of tomatoes. I think it's the home plants that maybe struggled a little bit. <laughs> there must be a trick to doing them right and to doing them well that those of us who try it at home. Yeah, yeah, I suppose that has something to do with it, right? Yes. yes. And we're gonna do something rather unique with tomatoes this time, at least unique to me. I don't know that I've seen this before. Right, we kind of, you asked me before, is this kind of like a bruschetta? And I, and I answered, well, it's kind of like the Midwestern mid 1960s version <laughs> of bruschetta. So okay. well, um, tell I, us about the recipe and where, where you found it. So this is another great great grandma Nellie recipe on her uh, recipe card. She listed some ideas for Sunday supper. This was one of them. So it must be, you know, you've had a busy week, but you want something hearty that's seasonal to feed your family. And this was one of the recipes and it's very simple. This was the like main course because this would seem to me like an appetizer. Main course. Huh. Really? You have to okay. eat a lot of it, I suppose. But well, it's pretty hearty and it comes from the creamed tomatoes. Oh, we haven't gotten there yet. No. Okay. So I went ahead and I, under the broiler, I put some uh, French bread. You could use hearty toast. It needs to be thick because, like I said, this is the entree. Buttered it just a little bit. And it is taking everything in me to not eat I those just right now like what? they are. You're going for <laughs> it. Be strong. I'm trying. <laughs> And then also I roasted some tomatoes. So these are the same tomatoes on the vine. I added a little bit of olive oil, thyme, and uh, onion powder to it just because I like a little more spice. Nice. We've talked about Sounds this good. before. And the goal with this is to kind of mash it up and get the seeds and any kind of, um, I don't know, of the seasonings you don't want it to go through. So I'm just gonna kind of press it through this. Whoop. Uh, press it through here just a little bit and let it drain through. But while we're doing that, we kind of make what uh, I would call similar to a, a roux. Um, it's a thickening agent so that it creams up these tomatoes. So we, back to roasting of the tomatoes. Basically, yep. you just took a tomato, sliced it, put it in a, on a cookie sheet. And then when and I smelled it, I took it out. Oh, okay. <laughs> Is that the trick? As soon as you start to smell it, you know you're about done? Yes. Yep. Because <laughs> you don't want it to burn. But even so, you're not going to use the skins. It's not going to go through in the okay. sauce. And I would think a tomato wouldn't take nearly as long as like a potato or, you know, a root vegetable like that. It was like 425 for eight minutes. Okay. Oh, it's not very so long at definitely all. Definitely keep your nose nearby. <laughs> You'll smell it, especially if you use some of the seasonings like I use, thyme, um, onion, garlic. You could put whole garlic cloves in there if you wanted to because like I said, you're going to, you're going to press it through so that you don't get some of those chunks. And as I recall, the roux is just flour and, and something else. Butter. butter. Is it butter? Okay. Yep. That's it. So we're going to thicken it up here and that's about all it takes. So we have that thickening. And kind of looks like Play-Doh. <laughs> <laughs> the kind bit. you can eat, though. Yeah. Oh, I ate Play-Doh. Don't get me wrong. That happened. Now we just get rid of all of the, the inner. I could basically. press it through there a little bit more. But the we're outer, gonna, actually. We're going to do some TV <laughs> magic here. <laughs> okay. Yep, and then you mix it up, and that creams up the tomato. You see it starts to get really thick and pink and red, and that's what we smear on top of the... So this becomes more of a spread rather than a, a chunky substance like your, our traditional bruschetta would be. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's like a buttery tomato paste. It tastes very cheesy, actually. Ooh. But there's no cheese involved. You could add cheese. Ooh, that would that be good. does not cheese. sound like a bad idea at all. Um, I've... I've even added hard-boiled egg for more of like a brunch style. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm thinking? Nutritional yeast. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you said that. Yeah. Sorry, Tim. I don't know the inside joke. Uh, Tim, if you've had it before, but I'll find a way. I'll find a yeah. way to bring it. When Natalie would come with um, our girl Maria yeah. and um, do farm-to-table recipes like this, um, we always use nutritional yeast. It's is, like cheese, but a flake. Is like this, food. this is saying uh, that regular yeast is not nutritional? Well, yes. this is like a cheese <laughs> replacement for vegans. Oh. Yes. So Anytime the word replacement, replacement goes into a food, I'm I'm not a huge fan. All right, well, we're, we're going to keep meddling here. You meddle. I'm going to eat meddle, some bread meddle. as it is, and then we'll uh, we'll put the two together and try it together shortly. There you go. Right. All of them, Natalie's recipes are on SkyLiving.tv, as well as um, a link to her website so you can see everything she's cooking in her kitchen.